O Sayer Chant, the chant of the One God, also known as Zobatala. This is the separate chant. This is the energy of foundational things, the structure of things. It is the energy that needs stillness and deep thought. This energy is associated with Kabaluaye, otherwise known as St. Lazarus or Sonpona. Hello, Dynamic Stars. How are you today? As a right 22, coming to you, as always, to bring your intuition to the fore, to bring more into your life. Today is a special video. I move. The sun is in my eyes a little bit. Um, today is a special video. We are doing an ancestor veneration video. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this and I didn't want to do it, and then, and then I needed to do it. My ancestors had been so, so much at the forefront of everything that I have accomplished and achieved in the last two years, three years, I mean, of course, all my life, but especially in these last two or three years, because I have been giving them acknowledgement, praise, veneration, worship, burning ancestor money, uh, praying with them, speaking with them, reading with them. So I've given much, much more than I ever have my entire life. And my heavy phone, hold on. They have been there for me. And this is a conversation that I'm sure many of you have had with your own ancestors, but it's a simple conversation. When we say ancestor veneration, ancestor worship, uh, communicating with the dead, you get all of these ideas and thoughts in your mind of, oh my God, woo woo, seances, you know, black candles, black cats, and you know, there's that. There is a place for that. What this is, is giving thanks, giving praise, acknowledging that we would not be here right now if it wasn't for them. And this is for your bloodline ancestors. You can also include your ancestors from way back. You can add in your revered ancestors, people that are not related by blood to you, but have taken a liking to you, that has taken an interest in you. Because in my belief, we have lived many lifetimes. So just because in this particular lifetime, you look like X, Y, and Z, doesn't mean that you didn't look like something else in another lifetime. Those ancestors from those other lifetimes are still your family. 
and they still follow you. That's part of your spiritual family. That's part of your ancestry. So I have Egyptian, also known as Kemetic, the original name. Uh, they called themselves Kamite, the land of the blacks. Cam is black. That was the very, very, very first spiritual tradition that ever called to me, that I followed. And I was there for over a decade. So they have a place here as well. Whoever is in your family line, spiritually or direct lineage, they will make themselves known to you over time. There are certain things that, maybe foods that you love and you have no idea why. It could be that ancestor that is nudging you to eat that food or partake of that activity or drink that drink because they want it. They want some. So if you have a hankering for shrimp and grits. Somebody wants shrimp and grits. <laughs> and you can put it down, you can eat it yourself. You can put a little down and eat some yourself. They want to share with you. This video, what you're, you're like, what is this video about? Today's video is about ancestor veneration. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about what that means and how you can incorporate that into your daily life, how you can um, identify maybe some ancestors that may not have fully come forth, but are trying to get your attention. Um, so there are gonna be some things that we're gonna talk about that might ring some bells for you, or you'll have an aha moment. And that's what we want, because at the end of the day, our ancestors just want to be recognized, want to be acknowledged, because some say, well, they're gone, you know. They don't need us, they don't need anything, they don't need food, what do they, they can't eat. How, how can they eat? They do eat. Everything has energy, anything, everything has ashe the food that I have put down while they are ancestors cannot physically eat the food. The energy, the intent, the, the joy, the effort that we put into making or procuring the food, the drinks, the desserts, the flowers, the candles, all of that is energy because the focus of all of these activities is on them. So by us thinking about them, by us spending our money on them, by us putting in effort and giving of our time and of our essence, I made that candle, that is my time, my effort, my thought, I created a particular scent that I thought they would like. All of that goes into thanking them, praising them, giving them honor, because we are taking time from everything else we could be doing in order to give to them. So that in and of itself is a great amount of energy. And anything else we do on top of that is even more. So we burn ancestor money. That is on top of what we've already done. We have put together here a beautiful plaza, some may call it um, a sacred space that is here for them so that they can come, sit, stand, float, peek in and grab some of the energy, grab some of the food, and 
appreciate the time, the energy, the thought. And this is what we are doing. And now you're going to ask, well, okay, why? Why, 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 why should we do this? Why do we care? Okay, fair question. We care because they have lived before us. They have gone through many, many things that some of us may never experience, thank God. But they have a base of knowledge, information, experience, and wisdom that they will share with us if we open ourselves and share with them. Because sometimes there are just emotional things that we are just not ready to deal with for whatever reason in our lives. And if they come, if we allow them to come and speak with us and we share our space, our energy, our aura, some of us even share our physical body so that the ancestors can come within the body to actually, I don't like the word possess because some people go, Ugh. but in order to seat themselves in a physical body again so that they can do more work, more cleaning, more teaching, more just sharing their energies with us, that will break through some of the issues that we have and are blocking us from moving forward. There are so many things that go into ancestor, veneration, worship, communication. I like ancestor communication because that's really what it is. Meaning it's a two-way street. To embody all that they would wish for us, that is a beautiful thing. That's, that's the goal. Because they wish for us to have way better than they ever had. And, and this is something that I saw posted somewhere in the city on a, on a billboard. And it's, it's beautiful. I'm going to see if I can link it right here so you can see it. It was something to the effect of, we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. I saw that and tears nearly came to my eyes because we don't think about it that way. We just think, oh my God, how hard we have it. And maybe if, if it were like this or like that, and, you know, maybe we don't need to work two jobs and we could sit back and have it a little easier. But think about this. Our ancestors had such a difficult time, many of them who came through the Atlantic um, slave trade. How we're living right now is a miracle. And if we stop and think about where they were and where we are. And we ask them to help us with their fortitude, with their grit, with their wisdom, with their ability to be chameleons, to do what needed to be done in order to move forward, even if it's a half a step. If we take that gumption from them, if we share it with them, with our savvy because we do have a savvy we do have a lot of intellectual capacity these computers the technology a way of thinking a way of being a way of moving in the world we do have that what if we combine those two worlds wouldn't that be amazing could you see your life greatly changing and that is what they want for us In order to do that, we don't have to stop every single day of our lives and do this. Because this takes time. It takes thought. It takes preparation. But we can do this, you know, 
a few times a year when when it hits your heart that it needs to be done and say thank you and sit with them quietly just sit you don't have to do this in death and <laughs> we don't have to do all that By sitting, doing some deep breaths, or just sitting and staring at the flame. Thinking about pretty much nothing. You just allow yourself to be emptied of all of the thoughts that you had. You know? and allow the energy of your ancestors to wash over you so that you can feel them and they can feel you. That's what we're going for. That's what you want. Just so you know, the setup here is a pretty simple one. It's not as elaborate as it can get. I have some yellow rice, some black beans, some uh, roasted chicken, some sweet plantains. I have some tres leches cakes. I have some candies, after dinner candies, if your mouth gets a little, you know, from the food. There's coffee, water, gin, apple juice, and then I have a white candle and a candle that I made. And of course, a beautiful floral arrangement. I went in to the florist just to pick up you know, a small bouquet like I always do. And as I'm walking, nothing, nothing, nothing touched me, nothing. And I'm just like, this is ridiculous. I'm in a flower shop. Something should be here. And then I walked and saw this sitting in the display case. And I went, that was it. And I got this. I can't stop staring at it. It's so beautiful. And this is what happens. You are touched and you know that that is the thing to get. Then I have my ancestors information, you know, the programs, you know, from their services and pictures. And then I have some water. You know, it can be plain water. I just, clearly I had something else going on in my head. I had some shells, I put some water on the shells and then I put some calendula flowers. Calendula flowers are very good for protection, for healing, for healing the heart. Um, it's also good for allaying, you know, tongues that are talking about you you know, gossip and things like that. So I did this because the same way we need healing, the same way we want things in our lives, we can do that for our ancestors by putting this together and leaving it here and letting it marinate a little bit, if you will. When we pour libation, when we give thanks to them using this, we are now giving the same healing to them. Because just because they passed on doesn't mean people stop talking about it, you know? So maybe we can give them some energy and some protection, some spiritual shielding from those who are living who are still speaking ill of the dead this is something we can do as well i also have a crystal here because i this crystal was something that i had elsewhere in my home but um one day 
One evening when I was meditating, they told me to go and get it. I went and got it. They cleaned me with it and they were like, it stays here. And I'm like, alrighty then. And these are the things that happen because there are things that they want to use to work with. And clearly that's one of them. Your setup for your ancestors is going to be the way you need it to be for your ancestors, the way they want it to be. You can play whatever music, um, chants, melodies um, that come to you. If you want something peaceful, ocean waves, um, violins, you know, soft guitar, all of that is fine. Anything that feels right. So I wanted to do a little bit of a talk ahead of time so that you had a better understanding of why we're doing this, what we're doing, how they eat, and also more about just being peaceful and not having to do so many, so many things in order to quote unquote make this connection work. Because giving of your time and of yourself is what creating a bond is with anybody in the 3D, right? So why would it be different for your ancestors? They were in human form before. They have personalities. They are, you know, watching and listening. So by being still and quiet and listening for them, you're going to hear. All right. So I think that's it. We're now going to uh, pour libation and um, the one who has given us these teachings that brought it back forth again for many, many during this time.
While he still lives, we want to give praise to the one that has helped us to bring forth these teachings once again. tradition, the many homes, the many houses, the many places of worship where Egyptian ancestors, Egyptian spirits, Kemetic spirits are still praised. While I do not know all of their names in all of these places and all of these traditions, I want to pay homage to all of the great Kemetic ancestors that have come down to help us at this time individually and collectively. All of the great ships that have come through and helped all of us during our transition from Africa to the Caribbean, to Brazil, to Cuba, to Venezuela, to the United States, and Because while one does not associate and affiliate the ancient committees with anything to do with slavery. This is all part of our lineage. This is all part of who we are. And they stand and watch. They stood and watched as atrocities occurred. And they gave strength. They gave their power. They gave their energy. They gave of their magic. They gave of the herbs, the knowledge of herbs, to assist all those who were torn away and were in different lands. We thank our ancestors, all of them, for bringing forth their knowledge and helping us to live, to keep living. We thank them for giving us to move forward, to look for the brighter side, to help us to understand that tomorrow is another day, that God will give us another day if we open our minds and our hearts to find it within ourselves to take the next step, to trust that there is going to be earth beneath our feet to take yet another step. I give thanks to all of the spirits who have come here today, the deceased spirits who have the light of God within their hearts, the light of Obatala Roser. We are looking for the enlightened, elevated spirits to come and partake of this offering to help us exude light in our life, in our life. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all uh, the committed spirits, the committed ancestors who have come to watch over these proceedings.
So now we're going to go to burning of the ancestor money for our ancestors. And I did, I did um, reach out online, various uh, platforms on social media to ask if anyone wanted to share their ancestors' names with me uh, so that I can add their ancestors into today's um, Joss Paper Ancestor Money Burning. And we have two lovely people that reached out to me and I have their family's names and I will be calling their names out as I do that. Burning some um, spiritual cleansing incense now. Shabzu Angira Ghe Oten
I'm putting in some Three Kings incense. Just felt like it today. This is not something you normally need to do, but you feel something, you do something. I am also going to have a candle, a smaller white candle, so that I can do this. for pieces that have not burned. Sometimes spirit guides you and suggests things to you. So you should follow that because your practice evolves, you learn and you grow when you listen to what is being told to you or watching for the pictures or feeling the sensations that you feel. I also have a little bit of water here. I have a big pitcher of water right here, just in case you always have water around when you're doing this. We give thanks to the ancestors, Betty Ben Clemens. I give thanks to Anthony Ben. I give thanks to the Butler family lineage and all unknown ancestors. This money is for you, Betty Ben Clemens, Anthony Ben, the Butler family and their lineage and all known and unknown ancestors of the Clemens Ben family. We give thanks. We ask that you be at peace, that if you have any needs and desires, that you let it known to your progeny so that they can help you with it. This is for Betty Ben Clemens. Betty Ben Clemens. This is for you. May you always have peace. We give this to you so that you may have additional resources should you need it for anything at this time or to move forward in your journeys. This is for Let's see Randolph Goldie. This is for Richard Randolph Goldie and brothers Norris, Billy Ray, MacArthur, 
and normal. Look at things. Look at things. This is for Sister Nola Randolph Golady, Emma Hankins Randolph, Augustine Crawford, Mary Melvina, William Hardy, Phoebe and Clayton Randolph. send you light, love, and prayerful thoughts. to burn for all of you who are watching please shout out your ancestors name because this is for them all of the ancestors whose names are being shouted out right now we give you love light peace Joy, and we ask you for your blessings. We ask you for all of the things that you would have wanted, that we can send you energy to help you with the feeling of accomplishment. We ask that the things that you want for us to accomplish, that you and those in your family can work with you together to bring forth a fruition in our lifetime, in your ancestors' lifetime, that will bring the greatest of joy and of spiritual upliftment to those in your family now. We ask that what your family came here to do, you will help them to do. You will help them to achieve. And they will, in turn, help you achieve what you need to do on the inner planes. All of the ancestors that have been called out, we are sending you love. We are sending you the most beautific of energies so that you can have, be, and do what you need to do to move forward to your next spiritual journey. We see you and we know you see us. We ask for your blessings as we send you energy and blessings today and every day.
beautiful beautiful just beautiful Some big pieces here, but it's pretty much burned out. that took part in burning and the prayers today we ask that all of our ancestors continue to bless us with their presence with their energy with their love as we continue to love and bless our ancestors of you of you just checking for anything that hasn't fully burned this here. As you know, I've done this several times. <laughs> and that is why I have this, and it looks like that, and then the cork. I also have a towel so I could put that underneath, should I wish, to do that. Again, big container of water little one here of water you always keep your space and yourself safe while you're doing this we don't want you to become an ancestor while trying to help them <laughs>
some ancestor money for those who went through the Atlantic crossing. So I want this to cool a little bit because I do not commingle uh, the ashes from ancestors with the ashes of those who lost their lives or went through the Atlantic slave trade. They deserve their own burning because for me, their struggle, their life, what they went through deserves its own place. Okay, so this is cool now. This is a picture of the castles in Ghana, the Almina castles on the shore. Um, this is where they kept slaves before they put them on the ships to take them to other lands. I actually visited um, in 96 and there was a ritual that was done there um, by many priests, uh, about 35, to help the heaviness and the mourning that still surrounds uh, this place. For the ancestors known and unknown that were taken from their homes, that were sold into indentured slavitude, indentured slavery, something that was a normal thing in various parts of Africa. Children were, you know, let out to do this to pay off family debts, but the children, the people that were put in indentured slavitude were treated well by the family that they, um, that they worked for. They were well cared for, fed, clothed, not overworked. They, they were a member of the household that they worked in. They were not abused they were not taken advantage of. So many of the families, the peoples, the kings that sold their people into indentured slavitude as they thought it was, had no understanding, had no comprehension of the atrocities that would unfold. This is not an excuse. This is not anything to relieve guilt. This is for understanding for all of us. Because from both sides, there was misinformation, um, 
just unclarity, uncertainty as to what was going to be. And while many, many more questions could have been asked, they weren't. Things happened quickly. And we know that all of the ancestors, all of the people, our forefathers and foremothers who went through the Atlantic slave trade had no warning, had no idea what would come to pass. For all of you, we burn this money to assist you, to help you to move forward to continue your spiritual journey. We ask that the mothers, the children, the fathers, the boys, all of you who were not sure what to do Please know that everything you did was for you to survive. And we understand, we love you, we thank you. We pray for your elevation. We send love, light, optimism, joy, and yes, peace, so that you can evolve and lead this energy state of pain and suffering. We elevate you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you for everything that you did so that we can be here. We did not suffer in vain. We thank you for everything that you did so that we could survive in this year. Pretty much just as I started to pray, this strange noise has begun. It is from outside. I cannot control it. It's just interesting. It's almost as if it's a pack of bees. I take it as a message that our ancestors are here because they come from so far that when they travel they may sound like a herd of bees or wings flying I give thanks thank you all for watching May you all have peace in your day and in your life and in the days and weeks to come. That's right.